This is the Arena MCQ. Maybe these are supposed to be called MIQs because they're all invitationals now. Um, I really haven't liked the standard format. I think the play patterns of a lot of the popular decks kind of suck. Uh, there's no good traditional aggro deck in this format. The only aggro decks that are close to good are decks that are trying to punk people out with Embercleave, and those aren't really aggro decks. They're basically pseudo combo decks. Um, I don't know that this archetype we're about to play is particularly good, but I really haven't practiced because I don't super care about this event. So we're just gonna like have a good time. This is a deck that I enjoy playing. Um, my mana base might be off. Uh, I went back and forth on whether or not I wanted 16 black or 16 red. And ultimately I landed on 16 red because I do have uh, double red Chandra on three some amount of the time, but I have eight black one drop. So it might be right to have one more swamp and one last mountain, but you know, here, here we are. Let's go ahead and dive on into some match with this. Uh, if we run good, we'll win a few matches. If we don't run good, we'll be out very quickly. Um, for those that aren't familiar with this tournament, they uh, increase the variance a great deal in this tournament for today. So if you go 10 and 1, you get an invite to the Invitational. If you go 9 and 2, you get uh, $10 worth of store credit. So there is uh, approximately five figures worth of expected value difference between going 10 and 1 and 9 and 2. Something, something, magic isn't gambling, etc., etc. Can I get back the first hand? What do you think? I think they'll give me back the first one if I ask nicely. I'll keep this and hope to draw a red source, I think. I have two castables at least. And if I draw the red in two turns, I get to go gutter into Stormfist. Uh, Sphinx probably means um, just guy fires, which is actually an incredibly bad matchup for this deck. Uh, I think this deck's probably fine against knights, and it's probably fine against the uh, against the other oven decks. But the uh, what's it called deck just has a button. This uh, the opponent's archetype is actually a big part of the reason why traditional aggro is not playable in this format. They are a pseudo combo. They're a combo control deck basically, so they get to play a bunch of deafening clarions and just mess you up real good with uh, clarion plus a fast clock. All right. I mean, all things considered, if we don't draw the red source, I now have uh, two plays for next turn. So that's good. Uh, I get to bring in four copies of Drillbit post-board in this matchup, but mostly this match is definitely just about uh, crossing our fingers and hoping they don't have it. Pretty pretty peak Magic the Gathering, all things considered. Uh, feels like they have a... Uh, feels like they have a Bone Crusher here, huh? I think, I think with that, I'm actually, even though I hit the red, I'm just going to go ahead and go Gutter Bones, which is Oven and Pass here. Rather than playing this out and getting uh, getting crushed. Do you have it? Do you have a Clarion? Am I baking in gutter bones? Sure. Here you go. No. I would like that one, please. Good good read on the Bone Crusher Giant there by me. So we take two, we get to hit them for eight, we get to bake Bone Crusher into a lovely pie. We'll see if they have untapped blue source plus uh plus, or untapped land plus fires next turn or not, I suppose. If they do, this Sphinx is going to be quite the roadblock. Always. Never, never not, right? Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and hit them for two. I get to go ahead and bring one of these back. Grab our second red here in case we draw Chandra. If our opponent's incredibly unlucky, we might have a shot here, but their average, average hand card quality probably wins the game from here. They have uh, Clarion, for instance. They just get to clean my board and then gain four life. Well, they don't have Clarion, at least. We get to bake this into a nice pie. Love to draw, like, a Mayhem Devil or a Cat here. Opponent attacking here is smart. They need to close the game out. Uh, claim the firstborn, not particularly useful. I guess I guess I can use it to deal two, huh? We'll play gutter. We'll uh, we'll 
claim the gutter. This is this is one of our cards that boards out in this matchup. It's real bad. So we get to do this. It gets haste to attack for two. There might be some merit to like holding on to that until in case we draw like a priest, but I think I want to just get like get my damage in while the getting is good and potentially uh potentially sneak in a few points here so that if we draw a mayhem devil, it can close the game out. That being said, like my opponent's getting two scry ones every turn, so the odds of us being able to uh get these last six points in are probably pretty low. I expect our opponent's a large favorite from the sports state. For people who are in chat, I am not reading chat while I'm on delay and streaming today, so... That's very aggressive. Uh, I mean, I guess they're like, I'm like theoretically dead next turn, but I've got like, you can gain six every turn, right? They have another threat to play here? They do not. Okay, weird. All right, so they get to attack with this, put them to four. I get to play this. I get to eat two pieces of food here. Go up to uh, 12. Bottoms up, baby. That's what you love, you love to see it. You love to see it. How lucky can I be? If we're incredibly lucky, we could do well today. It's the most important thing to doing well in magic, being incredibly lucky. I'm just gonna do this now so I don't like get Bone Crusher in response or something silly. I don't have anything else to do with my mana, I might as well. Gobble gobble. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, so we need to like, the problem they get, they get three scry ones this turn is the issue. Gosh, if we just done like one more point of damage somewhere. I only have two more, two more points here, right? And I can't attack with these. The good, the good news is I get to gain two eight. So we're not dead on board this turn. The problem is they haven't cast any Clarions yet, and Clarion will let them gain 12 here, so. We need all of the bottoms. Uh, Cavalier is also lethal. Cavalier would let them attack for 21 in the air. They topped, so I assume, I assume we're dead if they topped. Either literally or effectively. Clarion, Clarion and Red Cavalier both do it. Unless they're exceedingly bad at math, that top should mean we lose this game. Which, again, we're probabilistic to lose this game from this position. They've been very, very unfortunate to uh, to not kill us at this point. Yeah. So, if they see the line to activate three times, they attack for 21. And I'm only gaining... Um, uh, I'm only gaining uh, 8 tier right? Up to 17. So we were pretty fortunate to uh, have a shot here, and then, you know, they finally started running closer to average and found their thing. Like I said, matchup's extremely bad. Uh, concede rather than sitting here taking more game actions. I've got, I've got things to do. I'd like to go to the gym today, so let's just, like, lose relatively quickly and move on with our lives. So I'm going to trim the four claim the firstborns because they don't really have much to claim. I know we snagged a bone crusher giant there and it was okay, but in general, not fantastic. I think trimming one priest of the forgotten gods is probably fine. I like drill bit. This is kind of a one drop. I like midnight reaper because they're killing a lot of our stuff. Also insulates us against Clarion a little bit. I think, I think this is the plan. I like loosely went over sideboard guides plans against the top decks in the format. My only my only preparation for this event was against all of the top decks in the format. I uh, I ran through my sideboarding process with them. I was like, okay, let's make sure all these ins and outs lines up line up okay. So I think mean, against Jund and Knights and Just Guy Fires and Flash and whatever, I have a pretty cohesive plan. I don't know if it's a good plan, but it's a it's a plan that exists. So. 
sure. So close to it so far away, that last game. All right, hey, look at that. This is Magic the Gathering's premier play client. So this is a graphical bug that's existed, I don't know, since this card was added to the client. My opponent does not actually have four copies of Sphinx in their hand. They actually have two copies. It just shows each of them twice. Because Magic Arena is a high-quality, release-ready piece of software. Gosh, I don't know why Wizards doesn't send me preview cards. Why, why don't they send me preview cards, Chad? I don't understand. So they kept one of the top five cards there, bottom two twice. Bone Crusher appears to be ready. Hmm. So, do I go Priest plus Oven? I'm definitely attacking for two, so let's do that. I can go Priest plus Oven, or I could do Midnight Reaper. Midnight Reaper is much better against Deafening Clarion, right? Of course, the fact that they Bone Crushered my Priest could imply that they don't have Clarion. I'm gonna go Priest plus Oven and pass here, I think. Yeah. So I can do this. Then I can kill Bone Crusher and draw three, but I don't think I really want to do that. I think I'm just passing, because I think I want to be able to keep Midnight Reaper in play. So let's play Priest here, I think. We'll play Priest. We'll activate this Priest. Target you. Tap both of these. Something, something. Low variance game. Nothing like gambling. <laughs> um, so... Uh, I believe I have to turn off the auto tapper and turn on full control mode so I can do this and then do this while letting me pick which colors I spend. And then I'm going to go ahead and play this. And then I'm going to eat this with Witch's Oven. So let's me draw another card. And then I get to go land, play that one. Starting the auto tamper back on, huh? So if you don't go full control mode and turn the auto tamper off there like I did, it doesn't let you choose to spend explicitly red mana for bringing the gutter egg bones back on its activation. It just automatically uses both your black mana, even if you have black, black, red floating. So that's something to be aware of if you're going to play this archetype. I wonder if we'll see them attack here, since they're uh, likely to sacrifice something anyways. One of the sweet things about the Stormfist Crusader here is even if we draw two blanks this next turn, this gutter bones is going to get be able to get triggered from the Stormfist Crusader, so... We got that going for us. So we're going to have an extra creature to play around with anyways. So we both draw a card. That's a pretty good one. All right, so let's start here. Let's go Chandra, make some friends, priest. 
Zach the friend. Maybe I want all four priests in this matchup. I guess they're pretty creature based. That's a gutter bones. So I'm just gonna bring this back, I think. I'm gonna go ahead and attack for two here, because this has is the Phantom Menace for us. To play gutter bones, play gutter bones, play witches oven. And then like even if they sweep here. I get to draw five cards. Now, the problem with if, if they sweep is that they're going to get to gain five life, which is a tough nut to crack. So, like, if they have Clarion here, they kill the board. We drop to seven, but they also kill my Chandra, and they go to 12. And we're going to be at 11, as we'll take five from Midnight Reaper triggers. Do they have a non-Clarion Sweeper here? What is that? What does this attack mean? This this attack with no Clarion before it is weird. Sure. Okay, so just dead on board is what that attack means. Three, four. So that trigger is not lethal. Okay, yeah, so they're they're dead on board, and they're just not doing me the decency of not making me click through it. Uh, I don't need to show them Mayhem Devil, right? There's no need for me to do that. They, pr they probably assume I have Mayhem Devil, but, like, there's no reason to confirm it for them. Yeah, I expect, I expect a lot of people to make us do it today. Some people take these things very seriously. Yeah, I think after that game, my gut instinct of cutting the priest is probably wrong. If I just trim Wrinkle, it's decent as a haste threat. I guess I could trim Mayhem Devil. Mayhem Devil mostly just gets swept away. I'm boarding an extra 3-drop here anyways. And like, if I, have, if I have something online to be sacrificing with, I'm probably winning anyways and don't need the extra help from Mayhem Devil. And like, it's not like I'm pinging creatures and stuff with that. Yeah, let's trim, let's trim a double rather than a priest here, I think. Could go either way on that. That scene's not amazing, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it. Um, it's hard to, uh, I think it's hard to mulligan like one drop priest here. Hopefully we draw some spells, he said, before he died with eight lands in his hand. Like if I, if I mulligan this hand and I see like a six with like two, these two spells in four lands, I like snap it off, so. Hey, that's a spell. It's exciting. All right. Is there a sweep, sweep, sweep in my future? This is a matchup where I wish I had a fourth, uh, wish I had a fourth, uh, Chandra in my 75. She's very good here. Rats, they have a third land. It's hoping for a freebie. Freebies, freebies and hard matchups are great. Okay, it's a great draw. Didn't have a Clarion last turn. Stormfist Crusader means if they have Sphinx or just play the Bone Crusher this turn, I still get to push three points of damage. Stormfist, Stormfist Crusader is so good. This card's a big part of why Red Black's good in this format. Looking forward to playing this card with the uh, the new Red Black Titan. It's going to be probably my most built around card for the new set. Really looking forward to jamming that in a bunch of different shells. It's pretty sweet with like Priest and Oven and stuff. All right, did you draw Clarion, or do you just have a Bone Crusher? Please just play a Bone Crusher Giant. Thank you. Rats. I, uh, I really needed that to live, because we don't have much action here. Hopefully, if they play uh, four or five mana threat here, we draw any creature. 
Uh, ideally, we'd draw a Chandra or another Gutter Bones, but any creature would do, so we can just, like, use the Priest to take it off the table and generate some velocity. Midnight Reaper would also be okay, because Midnight Reaper is a creature that would let us activate Priest that also uh, would draw us three cards and hopefully propel us into some more gas. They drew Deafening Clarion for the turn. It's a pretty good draw. Hey, we drew another land. Isn't magic sweet? I enjoy magic. This is uh, this is a good example of why I just really didn't practice for this tournament. They, uh, magic's a high variance game to begin with, and the fact that they got rid of the second day of how this tur these tournament setups work means that they they took a game that's already high variance that made the tournament structure even more so. There are effectively no chances to mitigate bad luck if you uh, have a tournament the way that this is structured. All things considered, this is one of the better draws in our deck, getting uh, thoroughly rewarded here for sandbagging the Fable Passage. A lot of people, when they play decks like this, I see them talk about deck thinning, and deck thinning is very statistically insignificant. Just don't, don't, don't even think about it. The upside, the chances that you draw a Mayhem Devil and get to deal a damage like I just did here are much higher than the chances that, like, the deck thinning ends up being the thing that matters. This is a weird one to bring in against me. I guess they just want to close the game out. This is, uh, this is where the magic happens, chat. This is where the magic happens. Wild! They brought in all of those, huh? That seems so strange. I think we're I think we're dead. If these were if these were spells, we might have a shot, but without without spells, it's just hard to play much of a game. All right, I told my wife this could be a quick morning. Now is the exciting part where we run off. So here's here's the important thing to understand. Um, here's the important thing to understand about these tournaments. The best records to have in this tournament in order are 10 and 0, 10 and 1, and then 0 and 2. Those are, those are the three best records you can have in this tournament. Because the people that go 0-2 get effectively as many prizes as the people that go 9-2. Only the people that went 0-2 had to play nine less matches of Magic to get there. So. We're hoping, we're, we're shooting for one of those three records. My body, my body is ready to get uh, flame swept here. All right, step one, didn't get flame swept, sick. Reason bar, we're sure. Sure. Uh, I think I'm just going to do this, actually. Just gonna play both of these out. Let's see where we go. I expect there's a good chance they deploy Bone Crusher Giant next turn, so 
having uh, many creatures that can attack past that seems appealing. Really? Okay, interesting. At least we don't have to worry about them taking an extra turn, I suppose. What are we looking for at this point? Oven? I feel like it's an oven. Oven lets us close relatively quickly. Perfect. Hey, that's pretty good too. All right, let's start by attacking for four. dead to an expansion explosion so they go six land they have 18 mana they can deal 14 with expansion explosion so that's that's not lethal okay this is plus two mana so they can deal 16 with an expansion explosion still not lethal right because it's uh six 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 and two is uh 20 20 minus four is 16 Ex explosion is four Four plus X. This will be another matchup where the drill bits come in. I think these style of matchups are actual worst. We're hoping to play against like things like knights and other creature decks. These control decks full of sweepers are not not our ideal pairings. Two for two for two. I'm wishing I had more copies of Chandra. She's our best card in against these control style decks. Hopefully, it just doesn't matter here and they're dead, and then we can punk them out. Game three on the play for the last one. Oh, they're scrying. Well, that, that bodes well for our hero. Alright, they topped one. Did they find, uh... They find a flame sweep? They're like another Chemister's Insight into Flame Sweep here. At least I don't have to worry about them casting Nexus at Fate, huh? That that stain is no longer legal. Glass, glass half full. They're not going to cast Nexus at Fate. You have a Brazen Borrower. That does not block. I think I'm actually just gonna pass back to myself here on the off chance they have a uh, they have a flame sweep and they're trying to bait me into putting this back into play with it. Ooh, that's exciting. So, the thing I have to ask myself is if they have flame sweep, expansion flame sweep, can I win? Can I kill them? This is too. I think so. I think I just start by attacking. Right, because this does two, and then each oven is three. Right? Is that math right? This does two, and then this does three, and then this does three. Yeah. Because uh, sack the food, sack the cat is one, cat does one. So they're dead here. Kill you in response. Ooh. 
And again, today's try hard day for a lot of people, so they're gonna be making us making us do actual everything. Be very surprised if people anyone concedes to being dead on board. <sighs> Drill bits are great. Um, gosh, how do I feel about Claim the Firstborn here? Midnight Reaper is great. So I think it's just the same board plan as last time. Uh, this time, the thing that's different is I like, cut Mayhem Devil last time. And Mayhem Devil survives uh, Flame Sweep. So I think that's actually worth keeping here. I think this time I am going to cut the Priest. Well, they do have uh, Adventure Creatures. Mayhem Devil kills Brazen Borrower. And just Boat Crusher Giant's not that big of a deal, so... That's the board plan for sure here. And yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. Cat Oven, um, Cat Oven Midnight Reaper is one of our, our best, uh, best card advantage engines against these control decks. They get to draw a lot of cards, generally speaking. Alright, and then I think because we could be getting Flame Swept next turn, rather than going, uh, Cat, Cat, I go Cat Oven here. I'm going to do this now, which gives them the opportunity to flame sweep and kill both of these while I don't have the oven up. But I think that's fine because then they're not flame sweeping on my turn. Uh, missed a land drop. Feels pretty magic, man. So, um... I, I just have so many cards in my hand here that I think I'm actually going to go ahead and just sack this priest. And kill their brazen borrower just so they don't have that as a card. Like this, uh, what's it called? It's not very useful, anyways. Mm, spyglass. I don't think this is a reason to bring in Bedevil. Could go, could go either way on that. So they named they named Oven. Which does mean I can still bring the cat back with uh, this food that I already have in place. So that's nice. Opponent just concedes. All right. All right, chat. We can no longer zero and two, and we're one and one. So that means the goal is now ten and one. Personally, I'm excited to nine and two. Okay, this hand's very good if we draw a red source, huh? Got two shots at a red source. Even if we miss the red source and hit a black source, we get to play Midnight Reaper, which is fine. Another Steam Vents deck, Vomit. Well, the good news is Chandra is good against Steam Vents decks, so we got that going for us. Bone Crusher is ready. <sighs> Alright, well that's good. I guess I'm not playing Bone Crusher this turn. I think I'm playing Priest next turn. We'll see what we draw. If we break on a land, I think I'm playing Priest. If we draw a land, I might play right goal. Bricked on the land. Makes that choice easy. Say hi to my fiery friends. 
Chandra plus Priest is very good, obviously. Chandra gives you two bodies for Priest every single turn. You know, a lot, a lot of people have complained about Planeswalker design this year and th complained about three-mana Planeswalkers in general. This card is just actually just incredibly sweet. It's like, not, not overpowered, but useful in a variety of situations. I think it's a great example of a of a good card. So I get to do this. I get to go ahead and make you sacrifice and make some mana. What am I doing with this? It might just be nothing. I kind of like all my cards. I think it's nothing. I think it's just like a 3-3 with haste here. Which is fine. 3-3 flying haste is like a fine text box in this matchup. The claim is actually useful here because claim lets me give this priest to the Forgotten Gods haste. Which is super relevant in a lot of spots. Okay, they're down to nine here. So we're stumbling, but again, like I mentioned in the last two matches, Chandra Accolade of Flame is just our single best card in matchups like this, so. Very, very good. Uh, we got two shots to draw. I guess the land doesn't really matter. To shuffle their brainstorm here. Unless they have actual factual shock in their deck, we should be in an okay spot here. So I get to go make two friends, play a priest, uh, haste my priest, use priest to make you sacrifice. Draw a card, yep. Fetch another Swamp here, play a Midnight Reaper. And then this way if they have a Sweeper, I draw six. And they're going to three and I have, or they're going to four and I have Chandra Chandra set up. Plus a bunch of cards in my hand. Yeah, boarding, my initial gut thought of boarding out Priest in this matchup was definitely wrong. Yeah, I wish I should have registered for Chandra today. I don't, know, I don't know what the cut is, but maybe maybe the, the third wrinkle should be a fourth Chandra, perhaps. So easy, easy board in, claim, and a double out, I think. Sure. It's like plays good games of magic. They're sweet lines. I'm glad glad I decided to play this today. Never never forget that like magic has so much variance in it. That if you're not enjoying the deck you're playing, it doesn't matter if the deck you're playing, like, in theory has, you know, five or even ten extra percentage points. Like, magic, magic's not consistent enough and doesn't pay enough to, like, not enjoy what you're doing. So just, like, find a deck that you like, play that deck, you'll have, you'll have a better time. Uh, I'm gonna keep those. For a true professional, we'll draw one drop on one. Both these both these cards are very good here. Again, remember graphical bug, even though it flips up four, there's only two. But I get to sculpt their hand here. So kept one out of five again. Sure, that's not like the one drop I was talking about, but I'll, I'll do it in a pinch. This uh, this makes Bone Crusher worse if they have it. It's exciting. If they don't kill this, we get to uh, to take their bits next turn. Even if they do kill this, we get to take one of their bits at least. So again, if an adventure creature loses its target, it gets countered, so Bone Crusher Giant just goes away. 
Uh, well, we have Stone Cold Nothing. Let's see what they've got. Double Sphinx and other stuff. Uh, I think I think I actually want to just take their threats here. I think I just like hope they break on a land and then I get to take this next turn. He said. Cat is a great draw because it's a card that lets me deploy a threat here while also still drilling their bits. Pretty sure I just take Clarion. It's the sweeper. Again, holding on to Fable Passage for in the event that I draw a, uh, a Devil After. Sure. So we'll sack this, we'll bring it back. If they justice strike it, I have another food from the thing I ate earlier, so I get to bring the cat back again still in that situation, so that's fine. If they kill it twice, I could maybe be in trouble if I don't draw a creature, but let's just plan on drawing a creature. Mm -hmm. Show me your bits. Justice Strike, Aether Gust. Definitely taking the Aether Gust. I know the Justice Strike impacts the board, but the Aether Gust is more annoying and can interact with me on the stack, so I'd rather just take that away. Limit their choices here. If I draw something like, say, a Chandra, the Aether Gust is better. Well, I guess Chandra's pretty bad here in general, just because of the Sphinx. Worth noting that Justice Strike does not kill priests. We've got that going for us. Most spells are good draws at this point. Mayhem Devil, Midnight Reaper, etc. Yeah, that's not a bad one. So I'm going to go ahead and play all my lands out. I don't think there's really much value in sandbagging here. So this will basically get in for three points of damage, which is not terrible. So we'll crack this. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to fetch a third red, is there? So I also don't really need four black, huh? It just doesn't, yeah, it doesn't really matter. So I could sack this other food to uh, gain three and deal an extra point of damage to them, but that's not great because at that point, if I don't have a food, they could kill this cat and then I have nothing to bring it back. So definitely just want to sit on this for now, I think. Hmm. Had had someone just inform me I had Deckmaster on still. Thank you for that. I know my responsibility. Alright, so they're eating my food, which I now get to eat, which denies them drawing a card, but this does mean they can kill my cat and then keep it gone, so they've got that going for them. It's been a while since we've streamed on a delay. I'll protect you. I'll protect you all. I'm waiting to bring this back, which potentially misses a damage, because if I bring it back at the end of their turn and they have a removal spell for it, I just no longer have my cat, because I don't have any food at that point. So waiting, waiting is the conservative play. I don't know, maybe maybe I'm just too far behind to be conservative, though. A lot of lands drawn so far this game. One game one, right? We can try to steal game three on the plate. Feels magic, man. I've got time.
They're good. This girl, they could drag us back in a little bit, maybe. So I was hoping that would draw us two cards, but, you know, we have that going for us at least, I suppose. They're down to seven here. If they have a Clarion, this is good bait, but I definitely can't, uh, definitely don't want them to draw a card. Yeah, we'll play by the opponent here. I just don't think I can afford to play around that at this point, so. Want some gain for life as well. So again, the reason why I did that was because if I sack the food, they uh, it denies them a card draw. No, I am not making this up as I go. What do we do? I have live draws at this point. Uh, Chandra means I'm not dead on board, so I effectively can gain up to six with these. That's probably my best draw. Let's see if we can be fortunate for game three on the plate. Things considered. Anyone need a match? All no. things considered. Get him, buddy. Oh, I'm still dead, right? Because we're taking four. I don't know why I was thinking we were higher than that. Yeah, I only, I only gained six here, right? And yeah, they have nine. Silly, silly me. I was uh, I was thinking about it before um, before we took the damage in combat there. What else? What my counting was doing. Yeah, they may have to that border. Let's run it back. Close game, especially considering how many lands we drew. Just, just because it wouldn't be a Hoagland stream with a little bit of politics. If you don't follow D Dale Eight on Twitter, you should because basically he just fact checks all the ridiculous stuff Trump tweets or posts at his rally. Whenever Trump has a rally, he like live tweets updates on why the things he's saying are lies. It's really, really good for a chuckle. Really good, really good to know we have a pathological liar for a president. Just can't help himself. Uh, yeah, this sand's great, right? In. Turn one. Turn one, gutter bone. Sign me up. Burn his mulligan to five. That's step one of being lucky. I always think the same thing when my opponent's mulligan to five. Mulligan to four. Mulligan to four. Mulligan to four. Feel the burn, chat. Feel the burn. Real question is, huh? So I think, the, I was gonna say, there's a question on whether or not I wanna play Priest or Cat Oven. Getting the oven down before I play a good creature is better in the face of a Bone Crusher Giant. So I think I wanna do that. And the, the Midnight Reaper actually encourages me, that's unfortunate, the Midnight Reaper encourages me to get Cat Oven going sooner. So a little bit punished here, but it is what it is. So they're down to 16. I get to attack them to 13. We get to play Midnight Reaper here, so that way if they do have the Clarion on curve, we gas back up after, so maybe it's not too bad. Right, 
So they had so they had both, right? So we played around Bone Crusher Giant. They had Disenchant to punish a little bit. Ooh, that's a good draw. This lets me uh, have a little bit of information here about whether or not it's ideal to play Reaper or Priest to this turn. Um. Well, yeah, definitely that, huh? Let me just hope they don't draw a Sweeper next turn. Hey, sweet. So I get to go. Midnight Reaper. Ah, shoot. <laughs> um, so if I Devil, I get to deal one, two, three extra. I think I'd rather draw cards at this point. That's close, though. I think I'd rather draw two more than deal three more damage. And again, I have to go gameplay, disable auto tap, or full control mode, so that way I can float this red, pick up gutter bones, and pick to use the red mana. Magic Arena is incredibly release-ready product. That definitely wasn't rushed to production. All right, and even uh, even if they have a Clarion here, we should be we should be in a good spot. Yep. All right. Well. We've had three what I would consider bad matchups so far, and we're two and one, so on on track to nine and two. I'm not looking at notifications as they're going, but I would like to say thank you to Unemployed Sofa, Dan Lonsley, Happy Slice, Immortal Echoes, Weather Lighty, Curtis, by Zandine Pundit. Welcome back, folks. Thanks everybody for watching this morning. I am on a 10-minute delay, so I'm not looking at or reading chat or responding to notifications live. This tournament is over when we lose one more match. Currently two and one. Excited to take this standard format and put it behind me like a chapter in a bad book. That's fine. I'd really like uh, another one drop or two drop to play in the second turn of the game. I get two draw steps to do that, but... Gutterbones, Chandra Wrinkles, a pretty reasonable curve, so definitely keeping. Temple of Mystery. It could be a few things. Have I lost every die roll today? I'll have to go back and check the tape. That's another die roll we just lost. Could be Flash, could be Ramp, could be another Reclamation deck. We're 2-1 and one now, so I'd be kind of surprised if we see a Reclamation deck. And the Reclamation deck we played against was when we were 0-1. Bant. Sure. Sweetly. Sweetly. Tradesies. We took the Tradesies. Woof. See what they have here on three. Chandra is not still arrogant screen decks. They're good at attacking her down. Uh, this could be the Croaky's Bant Adventure decks. All things considered, this is a pretty okay turn three for us. Don't start any fires without me. Mayhem Devil's a pretty good draw. So the Chandra Elemental Sacrifice end of turn, so they do trigger Mayhem Devil, which is wonderful. They're still at 18, so I think it's right to mow down their Teferi here. This is uh, going to get to draw cards, generate some card advantage, so I'd like to kind of nip that in the bud if possible. Wonder if I'll see them cash in the Teferi for a card here or not. Could see like a Brazen Borrower here too. This is, this is another reason, like, this this format is kind of medium on play patterns. Just, like, between Tefri and Brazen Borrower, it's just, like, there's so there's so many counter spells and bounce spells in this format. Very, very vomit. Very, very... Pfft. Huh? Are great. 
We're gonna each discard a card here too. Probably Stormfist Crusader. I think I, I think I want the land. We'll see if they have a way to attack with this Love Struck Beast this turn or not. One of the one of the kind of sweet things is with the if this Chandra lives, the Chandra lets us uh The Chandra lets us attack with the Love Struck Beast when we uh claim the first Pornet. Very good. Baby Crisis, do 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 do. It's a two 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 do 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 do. Um, let's start with this and see where we go. I might discard this mountain. I know there's some appeal to having five mana for all of these, and I guess Gutter Bones is kind of an intensive too. Hopefully they just block and then I don't have to make a decision. Sweet. Hopefully they will like land hydroid creases for bigger here. Mm -hmm. Another Tefri. It's annoying. Stand by and watch. Yep. Let's try this. Magic's exciting. Do you love magic chat? Magic's like swimming upstream, it's fun. The uh, Breezen Bar were here. I draw and keep her, sure. All right, so what does land let me do? So land means that I can go. Mayhem Devil. All right, let's go Mayhem Devil. Claim this Innkeeper. And then I get to sack the innkeeper, which lets me kill the other innkeeper. And then I can sack this food to kill a shepherd of the flock. I can also just pick this gutter bones back up right now. That's probably the line, huh? Really kind of want a third black for next turn, so I can rankle plus gutter in the same turn. I'm 
This line of picking the gutter back up instead of holding up the food sacrifice is worse if they have another 1-1 one, one, because then the Lovestruck Beast gets to attack me. I've done the hero thing they don't have another 1-1. One, one. I like our position here. If they have another 1-1, one, one, it might be close. We're behind, but not just dead. No blocks. That's cute. Sure. It's a good thing we killed in the innkeepers, huh? Okay, sweet. Um, so... Let's go... Gutter Bones... And then this... Into this... And then if I sack this food... No, this can still block, so there's no reason to kill this proactively. So I can sack the food. I could I could trade Mayhem Devil or Rankle for Lovestruck Beast, but that doesn't seem like a very good trade for me. So I think, I think the plan is just smack them with Rankle. And say discard plus sacrifice. And then we get two Mayhem Devil triggers here because we both sacrifice something. So I get to go ping this, ping your face. Pass. Sure. All things considered, why not your best top deck? So what's my best top deck? Claim the Firstborn. Chandra's also good. Chandra flashes back, claim the Firstborn. She does not flash back, claim the Firstborn, because there's a Tefri in play. Huh. So... Priest is not bad. And then I think I'm supposed to sack this gutter bones, hit the Tefri here. So that way the priest is guaranteed to, or not guaranteed, but more likely to get to do something next turn. Obviously they could have something else to bounce or interact with it, but if I don't ping the Tefri, they're guaranteed to have something to interact with it. So they were fortunate with the Mayhem Devil draw, or the Hydro Crisis draw. We'll see if they had good draws. After that, I guess they didn't play a land the turn they Hydrate Crisis me, so that means they have a bunch of spells in their hand. So we're going to attack for like 8 here. We're hoping they don't have the ability to produce a 1-1, so that way Lovestruck Beast has to stay home. They have two more cards, at least one of which is a spell, I believe. Next turn, assuming I draw a land, I can sack this food, deal one to them, pick this up, and then do stuff with Priest and Gutter Bones, potentially. I guess if they attack with Hydrate Crisis, we could potentially kill them with the Wrinkle in the air, so maybe that's not the best play for them. We need to attack for at least three here. I guess I kind of want them to attack with Hydroid Crisis. It gives me a chance to punk them out, depending on what we draw and what their last card is. Alright, so 
So let's do one there. Let's pick up gutter bones. Let's play gutter bones. And the question is, am I sacking Rankle or not? I feel like the answer is I am. I think I'm supposed to sack Rankle Gutter Bones here. So this, this, deals two. Are they dead? Oh my god. Did they fix the Priest of the Forgotten Gods bug? They're dead if they did, I think, right? So this is sacrificing these two as two. Then I could target this and me. So this is two, three, four, five, six from this trigger. And then sack the devil to the oven is seven. Okay. So if they fix the priest of the forgotten gods bug. If they fix the priest of the forgotten gods bug, they're dead. Do we both sacrifice? Woohoo! They fixed it! They fixed it! Yay, release ready software! Yay, bug fixes! So didn't didn't actually need it because we drew the claim the firstborn, but in the event we drew a blank there, they were dead because we priested ourselves and had the had the sack on the oven with the extra point of the mayhem devil. See, that's why I'm playing this deck today. This deck, like, almost certainly is not tier one, but it's, uh, it's a hoot chat. It's a total, total hoots magoots. You love, you love to see it. All right, what am I doing here? Um, I don't have a plan for Bant stuff. Noxious Grass seems good, but Devil could maybe be good. The question is, how interactive do I want to be post-board? Claim the first board's very good here. I guess maybe I'm supposed to cut Rankle, just because it sucks to get tempoed by Tefri, and uh, Hydroid Crisis is kind of bad news bears. It was like, okay there. Chandra could also maybe be a cut just because she gets attacked. Her flashing back claim a Noxious Grasp is good, though. And she's kind of endless food for Priests of the Forgotten Gods, which is also important. Hmm. I'm going to trim Rankle and bring in Grasp here. Maybe I'm just supposed to go full interactive and like bring in Bedevil here as well. I wonder if Stormfist Crusader is a cut on the draw. Nah, that card pushes a lot of damage. I guess Stormfist Crusader is kind of bad against Lovestruck Beast. Although, giving it gives me extra cards. Like, getting to Mayhem Devil is pretty important in this matchup, I think. I'm going to trim one Chandra. I'm going to bring in the extra Midnight Reaper, I think. They can't really take this card off the table super efficiently. And if it sits there and generates a lot of card advantage, I think they have a hard time keeping up with us. Yep, that's the answer. One, two, three. It's just elementary. One, two, three. Real decks have curves, they said to me now. Do, 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 do. That's, that's definitely a line we're seeing from now on. One, two, three. Real decks have curves, they said to me. <clears throat> Pump up, the bump up, the wump up, the jam. Do, 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 do. It is worth noting that post-board in this matchup, um, I believe uh, Crokey's lists have always had three or four Devout Decree in the sideboard just because they this, the, the opponent's archetype does really get messed up by Mayhem Double. So I do expect them to have some amount of removal against us in these post-board games that did not have game one.
No play, turn one, turn two. We have uh, Tefri here. Sure. Cat is a great draw here because I want to play Priest out anyways, and now Cat lets me use all my mana this turn efficiently. <clears throat> Hopefully they play out two creatures here and we get to claim one and then make them sack the other one with Priest. Another decree. That'd be a little sad. We're still ahead at that point, but less ahead than we otherwise could be. <clears throat> sure. Annoying, but not the end of the world. Uh, we can even kill Anissa here, right? Rats. Well, the good news is they haven't developed any board presence during this, so we're still just chipping away at them, which is good. We're going to hold on to this passage because we could draw Mayhem Devil. They're through two Devout Decrees, so hopefully these will stick around and generate some cards for us here. They scribe top there. Do you have another play that impacts the board here? Brazen, Brazen Borrower isn't particularly exciting against our cards we currently have in play. Fine against Midnight Reaper, though. Oven is an excellent draw. So now we'll fetch because we want to use the mana, get our second red in case we draw Chandra. Do this, sack this, draw a card, so we can draw a land. <clears throat> okay, so let's do this. Love Struck Beast is a very chonky firstborn chat. Very, very chonky firstborn. He is a hungry boy. Kill your, kill your creature, draw two cards. Make two food. There might be something to this claim the firstborn card chat. Might be, might be something to it. Moving on up. That three and one. That three and one, right? Yeah, it was four matches. All right. Feel the burn, chat. Feel the burn. Slow ride. Take it easy. We want a die roll. That's so exciting. This hand is great. We want a die roll and our hand is great. Are you pumped up? I'm super pumped up. Can you feel it? Do, 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 do. Be, do, do, do. Do, 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 do. My, ki my kingdom for a fourth Chandra in my 75 chat. My kingdom for a fourth Chandra. Just all the all the Steam Vents decks today, huh? The, uh, the Jeskai Fires deck might be up there for one of the least interesting Magic decks I've ever played. 
It's very powerful, don't get me wrong, but the lines are super dry. Feels very, uh, very show and tell esque without the cantrips, which is the intricate part of the show and tell archetype. It might be right to cat oven this turn just because it's that much better against Bone Crusher Giant, but if they do have Giant, I have claimed the firstborn, so I guess I'm not super worried about that. I'm really glad other people started playing Stormfist Crusader. Stormfist Crusader was one of those cards where early in the season, I felt like I was just, like, taking crazy pills. Like, it felt like... It felt to me like this is a card that's just, like, absurd for me, that there's, like, no one else was playing. I was like, why is nobody else playing this card? So, excited that that one caught on. We'll see if they have Clarion here or not. Ideally, they're going to go land Bone Crusher Giant, and then we'll go claim the Firstborn, attack you for nine, and then put your Firstborn in the oven, play a cat. And they'll be dead very quickly afterwards. If they have Clarion here, though, we're probably dead. Story, story of Viagradex life. They had the Sweeper and we died. That's a tapped land. Sick. Yeah, you, you spend that mana not impacting the board. Interesting that they elected to scry land before they shimmered. I feel like you probably want to do that the other way. Now we might be at a point where we can we can beat a Clarion because they're low enough. Sure. I can attack with both of the all if I attack with all three of these they take three go to four this dies and then I don't really accomplish anything I can attack with both of these and then bring the gutter bones back right away so yeah I think I think I'm just like Hoping to not get Clarion next turn, basically. Yeah, I guess, I guess if they block here, I could kill this with the cat. Is that a worthwhile play? That might be a worthwhile play. Denies them a scry. Takes their blocker out of the way. I don't know, this turn this turn is close. It could be I could be putting them to three here instead of five. I think I'm gonna pass here. With the claim the firstborns, I can give Gutter Bones haste anyways. I don't think I think I might be able to beat a Clarion at this point. Maybe. Maybe. Fingers, fingers crossed, they play this Bone Crusher Giant out this turn. So we can claim it. Need them to not take the Mayhem Devil off the table here.
They didn't scry with Castle, and they brainstormed there, so that means they like all of their cards. That's kind of terrifying. Oh, or they were just planning to do this. Sure. Makes sense. Don't clarry on me, bro. They didn't discard a card, which implies they probably have the Clarion. They're through 17 cards here, plus Scries, so pretty likely to have what they need. Clarion is tough because the sweeping our board doesn't really matter. The fact that it gives these lifelink will really matter. There's one land in there. Hopefully they just play this Bone Crusher Giant. That would be great. Sick. In. In for Bone Crusher Giant. Please attack me for five. You, you gotta end the game. Oh yeah, you get you get aggressive. You do it. Get up in here. Attack me for seven. Arr, arr. Better get attack me with everything. How can I possibly win the game? I'd be really sick if they attacked with these two. This is the conservative play. They've already played two spells. They have a land drop. Are they dead? Yeah, they're dead, right? This puts them to four. They have to block here. They take three. I use the cat oven to kill them. Now they're really dead. Uh, I guess I just don't even show them the Chandra, right? No reason to. We can probably assume I have it, but our deck's a little bit off the beaten path at this point, so there's some value to be gained in concealing what exactly we're doing. Uh, oven decks that have been popular of late are not the aggressive oven decks like what we're playing. Oh, right. I need to restart the client. Let's write myself a big fat note that says restart the client after this, Jeff. You've been playing for 90 minutes. You got to restart this quality piece of software. Restart the client. We're a, we're a top Magic the Gathering Arena player. That means we know to restart the client every uh, every three to four matches. Okay, so I know Claim the Firstborn just won us that game, but Drillbit likely would have also won us the game by picking up their Hand a little bit earlier. So I think I'm happy with the board plan. We've got set up here bringing in four Drill Bits and the fourth Midnight Reaper for uh, four claims and a Mayhem Double. Click Submit. Hinek Entropy, the Pizza Leagues, Maltmeister. Thanks for the subs, folks. Happy Saturday. Hope everybody's enjoying their weekend. Oh, shoot. You know what? I didn't even think about my ad quota today. Probably leave the stream on and do a couple of ad rolls at the end is the plan. Yeah, that's probably the plan. Hit that, hit that quota that way gonna worry about it mid-matches let's just play stealing stealing game one here is good it means if we put her out game two we can try and steal game three on the play again this matchup's hard but it's not impossible We're one and one against it on the day already welcome back v-ball yep in the sand's great by its stuff i might actually not want to play stormfish crusader on two i might be right to cat drill bit yeah 
I think I'm gonna cat drill bit rather than play into a potential uh, Clarion. Works out really cleanly for us here. You got him. He's dead. And the real question is, do I want to play Priest next turn or Stormfist Crusader? I feel like the answer is probably Stormfist. Second Gutter Bones actually changes the dynamic on it because Second Gutter Bones gives me something to meaningfully sacrifice to Priest. So I think the answer is now this. Since they're, their only play they have, unless they draw something, is Fire's Phoenix. Fire Sphinx, sorry. Clarion. So if I do this, and then I can go land, rankle, make us both discard. Looking to fade Clarion. Ah, uh, that's lethal, right? Pretty sure. This is a uh, five, six. Yeah. They can't cast spells in our turn because of fires. Okay, four and one. Four, ba four bad matchups, four and one. On, on track for that sweet, sweet 9-2. We're coming, we're coming for that sweet, sweet 9-2. Oh, I need to, uh, need to restart the client. Oh, didn't get a match, sick. Look at that, the cancel button worked. These people are great, buy their stuff. In fact, when I get done streaming today, the Nerd Rage Gaming Championship Series has a modern tournament going on. So they have Modern Today and Legacy Tomorrow. So you check them out, twitch.tv forward slash energy series. BCW Supplies, great card sleeves, card sphere, paper cards, and other paper cards. Their peer-to-peer -peer trading network and inked gaming does custom gaming stuff. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Thanks, Bloria. Die roll. Boo. Boo. Die roll losses. I think I'm supposed to mulligan this. Odds of hitting red, red source, red source are pretty low. Like the priest doesn't do a lot with these midnight reapers otherwise. We're an aggro deck, so let's try for something that looks a little bit cleaner. This is the keep it six. <laughs> oh, just all of the all of the steam vents, huh? Nobody told me it was just guy control day chat. Boom, crushes ready. Scorching dragon fire. They're coming for our memes, chat. They're coming for our memes. Exile's my friendo, huh? Oh! Oh, they're playing the Flash deck. 
I was like, oh, they're just guy. No, they're playing blue, red, flash. I don't know how this matchup is. Probably not good. Even if it's not good, it'll be incredibly frustrating. This style of deck is uh, very annoying to play against. Even even when you beat the flash decks, you feel bad. This is, this is actually the other deck I was considering playing today, but it just wasn't quite aggressive enough for what I wanted to be doing. Uh, deck to start, see where we go. Meow. Daddy, you're streaming. I am streaming. What's up, dude? I want you to play a game with me. Oh, you want to play a game? When I'm all done working today, we're going to play games, I promise, okay? No, no, I'm, I'm staying with you. Whoa, dude, you just kicked my garbage can over. You didn't see that coming, yeah. Oh, there's garbage all over, dude. <laughs> garbage, garbage. Oh, garbage man. Garbage man. The boober garbage. Right. Garbage man. Oh, four year olds. Oh. Oh, four year olds. Oh, daddies. Oh, daddies. <laughs> oh, cheers. <laughs> CJ has a different one of those to that one. Yep, you're not wrong. Well, CJ doesn't have a Turner like that one. He doesn't have one of those. What's that Turner, Fiend? It controls the volume in Daddy's headphones. And you roll it? Wait. You mean that, mean that Fiend sound comes out of it after you talk, Daddy? Hmm. All right, so playing this pre-combat means it gets to attack, but it means that they have counter spell plus removal spell. They can eat my gutter bones. So I think because this happened, now I'm just supposed to pass the turn because I don't have enough mana to... Um, I, I don't, don't, I don't have mana to bring back gutter bones. No, the sound comes out of my headphones, dude. That That's a microphone. That lets the people on the internet hear what we're saying. The people who are watching can hear you right now. Yeah, they can hear you. And you know and you know what they think? They think you're loud. <laughs> Alright, dude, I love you. You do like I'm super mummy. So I didn't bring the cat back on uh, their end of turn because it wasn't attacking anyways. I didn't want to give them a chance to Scorching Dragon fire it. They're at a pretty high life total here, but I have cat oven goings. So this game could go either way at this point. They're under two resources until they draw Gadwick. We're going to bring back the cat at the end of their turn and then sack it to the oven right away. And then again, decline to bring it back. Another upside to waiting to bring it back is if we draw Mayhem Devil, we could eventually get an extra point of damage in with Mayhem Devil's trigger, so... A lot of, lot of upside to not bringing it back and a lot of downside to potentially bringing it back if they have a dragon fire. So definitely worth right to just wait. Sure. Deals three, and then they get to take one. They didn't take cutthroats. They took another good spell there, almost certainly. I'm gonna attack with this because it's free. If they have a spell and they eat it inside of combat, it's like not a big deal because I get to just bring the cat back and then uh and then bring it back to play. I'm gonna go ahead and play the land out and pass here. This attack doesn't really matter because they have a free block with the cat. You got 
Eh. And then uh, I'm actually not going to play around the third dragon fire here, which might be a mistake. I don't know. A lot of lists I've seen only play two, and I need to race them at this point. So if they have a third dragon fire, they have a third dragon fire. I guess any removal spell gets me here. Yeah, okay, this is wrong, because any removal spell gets me. Now I need a creature. If I draw, like, a Mayhem Devil or Midnight Reaper, I'm very sad. However, I am not sad if I draw that one. Don't have negate. Claim's actually really good here, huh? Because all of their threats, uh, even even Gadwick costs three, right? Yeah, Claim seems kind of absurd in this matchup. So rewarded for being a little sloppy. Claim the Firstborn often does a Searing Blaze impersonation, as you saw there. Bone Crusher is ready, chat. Okay, and because they're going to have a Bone Crusher in play now, there's no reason to bring the cat back proactively, because it's not attacking anyway, so there's no reason to let it die. Unless they have an Ember Cleave, they don't have good attacks through the cat, which is good. Checking out some of their options. Definitely looking for Cleave or Gadwick at this point. They topped. That's scary. Up, uh, opt and opt. Sure. Tail. A tail as old as time. Third opt's the charm. Did you draw Cleveland? If they drew Cleveland, they're winning the race by a lot. This is, uh, this is where the magic happens, Chet. This is where the magic happens. Is their third Rouse Outburst? That's so many Rouse Outbursts. What if they're playing fewer Gadwick? With that attack, claim the firstborn is lethal. Right? Yeah, so claim and Chandra are both lethal. Uh, Mayhem Devil was also lethal there. Because of the Fabled Passage and the Cat in the Oven. Go 13. I have another borrower here. Cut through, sure. Oh, they're diddling this. That makes sense. Right. Always forget this card is flavor text. 
This will get ionized, because that's how this, this deck works. Sabotaged, whatever. This doesn't need to be untapped to bring the cat back, so... So they're currently attacking for 11. So Rail's outburst is theoretically lethal. Sword is lethal. Maybe their fourth Rouse outburst, though. So I don't think I'm really worried about that. Of course, even three is unusual, so four could be could be a possibility. I don't know, just hoping to draw spells. Feels magic, man. Tapping the food means that they have double bone crusher, we're dead. Because this needs to tap to game three. They have a brazen borrower in their hands, so they can tap my priest during the upkeep. That means, assuming they don't have counter spells, oven is lethal, cat is lethal, mayhem devil is lethal, uh, Chandra is lethal. Oh, they could have a lot of things that stop any combination of those things that were just kill us out right though. How about another land? Do you think another land is lethal? God, are we one point short again? Is this act actually just our life? It was one point short for another time today. Can bring can bring the cat back, can sack the cat, can bring it back there at one. <sighs> Definitely a Midnight Reaper matchup. Um... Huh? What do I what do I want past that? Claim the firstborn seems good. Is that a drill bit matchup? It might be a drill bit matchup. Wrinkles expensive and kinda clunky. Let me think of this. Bone Crusher Giant kills their brazen borrowers, but that's about it. Could be right to just have a couple of Bedevil in my deck. Triggering triggering the uh the spectacle on drill bits probably not too hard though. Yeah, let's do let's do this. Been a little bit more fortunate that game. Things could have broken different. As a general thought slash announcement, if you are watching and you are excited for Theros cards, deck submissions are open for Theros stuff. Um, standard standards look a little shaky as far as your interest so far. I've got two two standard decks lined up four days four or five days out here. So if you submit standard ideas, they're going to get played relatively quickly. At a minimum, I'm planning to do a bunch of standard Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
and see how it feels after that. And then depending on how those four days go and how viewer interest looks will dictate how much standard we do moving forward. Still, still been a lot of buzz around Pioneer. Those decks are coming in faster than I can play them, so expect to see plenty of that on the channel still. But as always, we're going to follow what people want here. Um, yeah, this is a keep. One, two, three, hopefully. Hand needs to draw land, but if we... So, like, the worst possible draw with this hand is more swamps. But so long as we draw anything that's not more swamps, we should be in a pretty happy place. Chandra's are only double red cards. There's only two more of those in the deck. So if we draw lands and the red sources, Chandra gets to play. If we draw non-lands, then we have non-lands, and that's great. <laughs> oh, feels magic, man. This will get shocked here because they're pausing, so they have a play. That's at least a castable spell, you know? This part where they shock into quench and then nothing else sticks for the rest of the game. Ooh, that's exciting. Scorching Dragonfire. This matchup's probably not good for us. Just Brazen Barber, sure. Exhausting is a good way to describe this standard format. Exhausting. Anyone need a match? No. I suppose Chandra dies here to end step Brazen Borrower, untap Bone Crusher Giant. So maybe that's not ideal. Supposed to lead on Mayhem Devil so that way I can get some extra value out of her tokens the first time she makes them. A shock outburst or whatever else here. Chandra dies. Which I guess she traded one for one then. She was like a distraction, did some damage. Maybe that's not all bad. Maybe. Dragonfire also does a Dragonfire hits Planeswalkers, right? It's like magma spray that does planeswalkers. That's interesting. Don't worry. Well, if they don't have a way to interact with this mayhem devil, we're in a very good spot. That's pretty unlikely, I feel. Don't quench me, bro. They just have another borrower. Sure. So, had they not had that, the Chandra tokens would have killed the Brazen Borrower here, which would have been ideal. Now I feel like we're pretty far behind. Midnight Reaper and Chandra tokens explicitly don't have any synergy just because Midnight Reaper draws for non token cards. Feels like we get to be done at 4 2. I don't have any instant or sorceries in here, right? Alright, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my day. Everybody, uh, thanks for thanks for hanging out. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Saturday wherever you are in the world. And uh, I'll be back on Monday with some Pioneer followed up by Historic. We'll be diving into uh, Standard with uh, new Theros cards here on this stream on Thursday because uh, no love for Watsi. So uh, have a good one, folks.